Greek mainland and Peloponnese, and beneath an adjacent hill are the extensive ruins of ancient Corinth. Of the city's former magnificence, only a few Doric columns of the Apollo Temple that date back to the 6th century have survived. Because of its favourable location and fertile soil, 3,000 years ago, during the Neolithic period, the first settlements were established here. However, as with several other prehistoric communities that inhabited this region, the earlier buildings of Corinth were completely destroyed, although the reason for this is unknown. A few of the surrounding villages were not abandoned, thus normal life in this region continued. During the 8th century BC, the city prospered. The establishment of colonies soon stimulated trade, and its rising prosperity was only halted by the more prosperous city of Athens. During the second half of the third century BC, the city was given political power as a member and capital of the Archaic Alliance. In 146 BC marked the end of classical Corinth. The Romans devastated and plundered the ancient metropolis and enslaved its people. For almost a hundred years, the ancient ruins were uninhabited. But thanks to Caesar, new life returned to the city. Protected buildings such as the Apollo Temple and the source of the Pirini Spring were acquired by the Romans. The ancient marketplace of Agora was the social and religious centre of the city for both Corinthians and Romans alike. The Apollo Temple is one of the oldest temples in Greece. It was most likely built in 550 BC. turn of the millennium, Rome also recognised the unique strategic value of the city. They designated Corinth as the seat of the Roman governor of the province of Achaia. The most important archaeological finds have been discovered in what was formerly an urban area. They are now exhibited in a local museum.
At the end of the 19th century, scientific excavation of Agora began, work that still continues to the present day. The exhibition covers the earliest historic beginnings of the Neolithicum, masterworks of archaic sculpture and 200-year-old silver sabres and pistols. Statues of wealthy Roman citizens predominate. However, the museum provides a good insight into the city's artistic and historical past. The city's prosperity reached a further peak during the second century AD. Roman villas were adorned with precious works of art. From the old fortress on the 575 metre high hill known as Acro Corinth, even today the view seamlessly extends across the former city to the sea. Byzantines extended the ancient fortress for their own purposes until the time when the Franconians, Turks and Venetians arrived here. A massive earthquake during the reign of the Byzantine Emperor Justinian caused extensive damage to the town. The further development of Corinth was stopped in its tracks. The 11th century brought a new wave of prosperity to the town. And in 1147, invasion by the Normans was successfully defended. Surrounded by the pure, wild beauty of nature, the ruins blend harmoniously into the magnificence of the surrounding landscape. From a medieval fortress, in the distance there are the remains of an ancient Corinthian port. Even now, shipping plays an important role in the city. However, today only a few ancient stones serve as a reminder of the important harbour that once existed here. The Isthmus Canals of Corinth have replaced the city's historic harbours forever. <laughs> 